you, you better. You this guy says we're pivot. You understand just how we living. This for me is like rap religion. Open my own beat because we got this Skype. When it comes to this, y'all, I can get it hype. When it comes to this, y'all, calm has risen. How you living, huh? Yo, how you living, pivot? One of the great things about doing this show is I just get to make a wish list of people that I just want to meet and talk to. And this guy, Jorge Masvidal, who is the baddest motherfucker on the planet, literally has a belt that says that, um, has had an incredible journey. Um, one that I, I really have been inspired by. And, and I asked him all the, the questions that I wanted to ask him. And he didn't hold back at all. And uh, it's actually better than I thought it was. So here is the Cuban Jesus, Jorge Masvidal. What's up, man? You know what's so crazy, man? It's like, it's, it's, it's very surreal because it feels like I know you and I don't know you. And, and the thing that fascinates me the most about you is this, is this gap in your life that I find so inspiring where you're an elite elite fighter and you're doing your thing and leading up to 2017 you're crushing it but you're losing by decisions and they're controversial and you go away and you go to the jungle and something happens in the jungle and you come back and you destroy darren till and it, it's you have a new clarity that um, I, I found so inspiring and I, I may have gotten it wrong, but in the jungle, did they take any device that you had? Everything. Right? They, uh, no cell phones, no TV, no music. And that was it. You know, uh, here and there, we'd have to catch like a bus ride. So we'd hear music every once in a while, but like, uh, TV and internet were a big no, no, you know, they, and they made sure of it. They, they had a staff just to make sure that nobody had a cell phone in there or nobody was doing like extra activities. So, so you're left alone in the jungle with yeah. yourself well, and your thoughts. A, yeah, there's a group of us. There's maybe like 10 of us, but um, from the group, I'd always venture out because we were, we were in these like huge compounds, man, like 20 acres, a, any which way you went is just dense and dense jungle. And then we had beach. So they, they, they wouldn't like you to venture out too far, but the place was so big. And once I got the noise that there was no stopping us, you know, it was just, I'd, I'd be out there getting lost, you know, and, um, a big part of the show was like fighting for basic necessities. So like TV wasn't allowed or even like common games, like checkers. We had to make our own checkers. They wouldn't give us things to like entertain ourselves. So just getting lost in the jungle was like a daily thing for me just to keep my, my sanity and stuff, you know? Well, what was, what was the, what was the clarity that you gained about life, career, path, anything? Well, and at the moment I had 16 years of professionally fighting. Right. And I had looked at like the things that I had done right in my life as far as fighting goes and the things that I had done wrong. So I had a lot of data, man. I had a lot of, of do's and don'ts. So I started every day just thinking about this and that. And, and the times that I won, what did I do leading up to that? The times that I lost, what did I do leading up to that? My thoughts before fights, um, how I was feeling, the way that I was sleeping, all these things that I tried to just micromanagement, reverse engineered and just get after it and dig like what was the best version of me. And then um, as well as in the show, I, I got to compete a lot. So every day we compete one or two times against each other. There was an ex Olympians on my team. There was all types of, of different guys from different sports and, and, and athletes in there. So I'd get to pick their brain before competition. Um, the silver medalist for, for the mile in 2014 was with us. You know, so I got to pick his brain a lot. We had another gym, uh, Olympic gymnast. So I, I got to see how um, the mindset before they compete, what they do on the regular and, and all these things. I just started, man, just coming up with a form and a game plan that will work for me. I said, all these things that I've been doing leading up to this, I shall no longer do this. If I'm going to make a serious run for this belt, these are the things that I am going to do. So I changed up a lot of things in my life, not just on the, on the professional, but on the personal. I caught off tremendous amount of negativity and, and just a lot of things that, that, they weren't pushing me to the top. So I said, you know, maybe this thing is neutral. It's not even making me worse, but if it's not making me better, I'm just going to do away with it. So when I came up with that formula, the only thing that was missing was commitment, dedication, you know, like some serious gasoline behind it. Because I, I had the formula in my head. I had, this is what I'm going to do as soon as I get out and I'm going to achieve my goals. But all I had to do was, was have that commitment, you know. That's why I think my, my story relates with so many people because you could change your life. You could do that paradigm shift the moment that you really decide, hey, I'm going to live or die by these rules that I'm going to set, you know? 
what what's crazy is that you had everything that you needed. You had put the work in. You were capable physically of doing it, but in a weird way, there were so many distractions because we're a slave to these things. And sure. they've I figured out th- these are drug dealers and the apps are drugs and we're fucked and they've got us, right? So they got took it. that away from you. And and I don't want to speak for you. Uh, this is just me, you know, from afar witnessing your journey. And because you had no distractions, you were able to get the clarity to see what you needed to, in a, in a weird way, become a savage in that ring. And like with Till, it was like you came at him with such clarity of intent. It was like you were not going to let this go to the ju- judges. No, not you weren't. Yeah. Yeah, I would have lost that one over there. For 1,000%. 1, 1, I, I, <laughs> I took, uh, since I took the fight, a lot of the, the guys in the group and stuff and, and some of my close people were like, man, they, you know, he's number three of the world right now. Why don't we get an easier fight? You've been out for a year and it's in England, you know, so you got to win by finish. And um, that's always been like something in my mind where a, a lot of those negatives in my head, it's not even that a tournament's so positive. I only see it as a positive. I'm like, well, this is perfect because my game plan, I have to put it forth going forward, which is not going to a decision with anybody. And um, I definitely don't want to go to decision with a guy from England in England. So it, it was just, it was like the perfect storm for that, you know? Was there a moment when you were in the jungle and you had no phone and you had no distractions where you you found the clarity that you knew, okay, the stakes can't be any higher. My life can go one or two, one or two ways. Um, and I don't want it to go the way that it's been going because you could kind of see where it would have gone. Yes, sir. So you kind of knew if you didn't take matters into your own hands and kind of laser focus that you were, you were going to be yes. a, a, almost a lesser version of what you're capable of. Is that right? A lot less. Of, I mean, none of 2019 would have happened. You know, I, I came in with some, with some plans. Um, I'm not much of a person that writes it down. I just, think about what I'm going to do and I get it done. These things I actually read it down, shared it with my management. So they were like, wow, you're really, you're really on a new page. And I was like, these are the things I'm going to get done in 2019 and 20. Let's get after it, you know? And in a good amount of the the targets that I set for 2019, most of them I hit. So that just gave me the, the courage and, and the belief that, Hey, whatever I'm doing, I'm, I'm in the right. I just got to stay in this direction. My, my, mind, body, and soul is in the right direction. I'm already seeing the improvements. I'm already, I mean, it, it was just an indicator of like, man, keep doing this, you know, no matter what the sacrifice is. And like you said, on, on, the, on the professional level, I had a lot of gifts already. I was talented with my with my hand speed and power and I had good reflexes and a good know-how how to fight it. So it was, man, 60% of it was from like the personal that I had to really get it out of my life, get, get these things out of my life for me to move forward. And when I made that decision, a part of me was like, ah, oh, this is going to hurt. But I immediately understood that this was the right decision, you know. It, 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 and if it's hurting me to let go because I'm really going to let go of these things, I'm only going to do better in life, man. Well, so, why, uh, why, why would it hurt you to let go? Uh, you know, let, let's say uh, freaking eating Krispy Kreme is your thing at 2 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's going to hurt, you know. That's going to hurt like fuck. And, and just like dumb things like that, but, you know, from, from all across the board. So they hurt, you know, letting go of some habits and stuff, but you know, it was needed to, to evolve. And another thing, when I, when I was in the jungles, um, there, there was a constant thought, you know, cause I'm, I'm by myself a lot of times. This doesn't happen back home in society. I wake up and I get to formulate my own thoughts. It doesn't happen in society. Cause as soon as you wake up, like if I look at the phone 30 minutes or an hour later after I woke up or, or right away, someone's already texting you. So there goes your train of thought, you know, cause you're already, I'm, I'm thinking about other things and one thought opens up another million thoughts, but they weren't necessarily mine. One thing that would happen in this jungle is that I was waking up and going to sleep to my own thoughts and the same thing kept coming to my head. And I was like, I, I have to get this done. It's, it's just a no brainer. This is what really the real me is telling myself. It's like, Hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what we have to get done. and We're going to get it done. And um, a lot of the things that happened and I haven't shared this too much, but it, it, it just came to my mind right now. A lot of the things that happened in there were like, uh, were like some were supernatural and great things. But then when I got out of the show, I read this book that everything that happened to me in there, it just, mapped it out for me and made sense. It's by Napoleon Hill. It's called um, 
outwitting the devil. And this book really, really freaking um changed my mind on a lot of things. And just like everything that I was thinking, this is the the path to success. This book just put it in detail for me. This is, that's it, man. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled off is that he doesn't exist. Amen. Yeah, I'm. A, yeah, it's an ama- amazing book, man. That that is so heavy and. You know, not to get too uh, spiritual, not to kumbaya on you, but in a weird way, what was kind of forced onto you needed to happen. And it's almost it's almost a metaphor in a weird way for meditation, because you you were forced to meditate. And we are you use the word, you know, you're slave. We're all slaves to our thoughts and our doubts and our fears. And, you know, when I talk to people about meditation, they're like, no, nah, I can't do it, man. I, I, I got too many things going on. It's like, we all do. We all are slaves to that circus, you know, those doubts and those fears. And once you go inward, like I had some crazy stuff happen to me and it was a, it was a real turning point in my life. And I somehow intrinsically knew I didn't have your situation. It was all on me. So I knew if I didn't go inward and meditate every day, I was going to be in trouble, real trouble. Like it's a wrap. I needed to go inward and be quiet and and simulate that feeling you had in the jungle. You know, no distractions, be alone with myself, be present, own my truth. And from that, anything is possible. But if you don't do that, you know, we are going to be a slave to our doubts and fears and other voices and stuff that comes into our head. Like you said, that's not even necessarily our own thoughts. It's almost like, we're, we're a radio and we have these, that could be someone else's thought that's there. And then you kind of think you own it and you don't, you know? So you got to be as present as possible. When I saw your journey, I went, man, that is, that is fascinating. And then you got to like live it in front of all of us. You know what I mean? So it was like, you're a living example in a way of, 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 the, of, oh my- Change it, you know. You could you could do better than what you're currently doing if you really want to put the time, the sacrifice, the the insane dedication that it might take to wherever it is, you know, to get to the next level. Yeah, and yours is the extreme example because we have metaphors every day that we're dealing with, you know. But you're locked in a cage with another man. And by the way, I feel like I'm qualified to even have this conversation with you. And I feel like anyone that interviews an elite MMA fighter should have to. Get in there and go toe to toe with with anyone that's in the in the game and train with them a bit just to get a sense. Because the the thing that's so funny is everyone, you know, they're everyone's like, you know, a, a warrior on their keyboards and talking shit and throwing shade. And the reality is they have no reference for the dedication that you guys have to have. They think, okay, you were a backyard street fighter, you fought Kimbo Slice's guy, you got swag, and then you can just go dominate. It's like, do you guys know the sacrifices these guys have made? The hours, you know, they just don't, they don't get it. I, I, you know, train, I train with a guy with Rashad Evans, you know, and, and just, you know, I'm throwing up going like, how does, how do these guys, how do they do it? And that's one of the reasons I'm such a huge fan because you have to have skills in every different way to, oh, yeah. to, to, every discipline to navigate anything that's coming your way and you're fighting the elite of the elite. And, um, so when these guys interview you, I almost feel like, you know, that it should be a prerequisite. They need to just maybe go into camp with you for a minute. You know what I mean? And just roll. Six week training block for all reporters. (laughs) How, how, uh, cathartic would that be for you to take a couple shots at some haters? Speaking of which, man, so we're just coming off this year and what it feels like you're looking at guys like, for instance, in your world, the, the, you know, the Michael Bismans and the, and the Joe Schillings of the world that are being accosted and they're fighting, you know, you've seen in public and you don't see this. You don't see it because guys like you, the reality is, you know, you're a black belt and you could be sued. And although you're capable, you've got to hold it together, you know? But the problem is now we've had people locked down for over a year, so they're not thinking right. And their social skills have atrophied. And they got some liquid courage in them. 
and they're going to take a shot at Cuban Jesus. Yeah. Does that worry you going, you know, out? I, I try not to go out much. And then when I do in Miami, I, I uh, it sounds as weird as it does. I have to roll with security, even though I could, you know, for the most part, defend myself. But yeah, I have to roll with security. I got a couple guys every time I roll because um, sometimes it just gets weird, man. For the most part, people are cool. Hey, what's up, man? Can I get a picture? I give them a picture real quick and it's over. But sometimes, you know, it gets weird. Um, The other day, I'm, I'm uh, where I just finished uh, leaving the mall. And I'm about to get in my car and I'm waiting for the ballet. Random guy just comes up and I'm, I'm with my manager and like two bodyguards and, and the cameraman. We're, we're doing some uh, promos for this uh, store. And this guy comes up and he like says, does it feel good? And I go, oh, excuse me? And he goes, I said, does it feel good? And uh, he has his hand like this, like he's being real weird. Like, he's, does it feel good? Something, this guy either has something behind his back or he's going to give me a gift or he's going to punch me in the face. I don't know what it is. So I take a step back and I go, hey, have a good day, man. So my guys immediately like swarming. And he goes, I want to know if it feels good, motherfucker. And he's like, he's still like this. So now my guy's like, hey, what's behind your hand? And they grabbed him. They like moved him around. He just had his hand clutch. And he kept like, I don't know if this was like a, a crazy dude or or he knew who I was from fighting, but he kept just screaming out, does it feel good? And they, they separate him. I'm still waiting for my car. Three minutes later, he's screaming out the same exact line. Does it feel good? And I was like, man. You know, this is why I need security, even in my own city, man. Because who you, knows, right? You, just you, by myself, I don't know what this guy's gonna do. Or obviously, I'm not worried about myself. I'm worried about doing something to a fellow like that, and then you know. Correct, but also the reality is you don't know what he has behind his back. Uh, and usually, I, I'm not a gambler in that situation. Like if somebody's like this. If it's just me and you, man, it, it, you know, God be with you because I'm gonna protect myself. You know, it's just that that situation. I knew my guys could take care of it, so I just stood back they grabbed and they pity patted him real quick weapons on him, but it was just interesting you know it was, it was weird you know yeah and also you can tell right away when you're interacting with someone who's never been punched in the face if they've yeah. never been you know what i mean do you know what i mean because the shit hurts right and if someone's never been punched in the face they have a certain kind of uh uh delusional presence been hanging out too much with the fighters, man. You know too much. Now, <laughs> Don't go anywhere. How you live in J. Piven will be right back after we pay some bills. We all have one essential that we go to every summer. Mine's wine. And I don't know a lot about wine. Uh, so First Leaf is amazing because they curate the whole experience. They'll raise your game completely. First Leaf is a wine club that curates and ships boxes of wine that are perfect for you. You can try wine from renowned winemakers all over the world. Uh, I actually have a buddy who bought it for his mom for a year subscription, and she absolutely loved it. So it's a great gift for anyone. It makes you look like you are you really know what you're doing. So you can skip the last minute wine stop and spend more time with the people that matter. Award-winning wines are delivered to your door at 60% off retail. Yeah, you heard that right. Whether you're by the water, grilling with friends, or taking it easy at home, First Leaf is the perfect summer staple. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash Piven. That's six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash Piven. Whether I'm running or lifting or yoga, or Pilates, whatever, I'm doing something every day and I'm depleting my body and I was kind of just running out of juice, out of running out of gas. And sometimes you can't get to a meal. And so just a little liquid IV, it, it's a game changer because it just stokes your electrolytes and uh, puts you right back in the game. Great tasting. I like the, the acai berry. Um, passion fruit's great. Guava, watermelon, apple pie, strawberry, lemon, lime. I mean, listen, medicine's not supposed to taste good, not supposed to taste this good. So get some liquid IV in your life. Come on, man. By the way, I've known people that just solely use it for a hangover, and it's, it's literally the cure for the hangover. Grab your liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code PIVIN at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code PIVIN at liquidiv.com. Let's get after it. 
in talking to you, I'm smart enough to know, I think I know who you are, but I don't know who you are. Like I've watched all your fights. I've, I've, I've tried to observe your journey, but the reality is I have to, you, everyone is innocent until proven guilty, no matter what, that's what this country is based on. There's, there's so much guilty until proven innocent that, that that's a whole other story, right? But when, when I look at you, I want to know your story. People look at me, you know, I played Ari Gold on Entourage for, for 10 years. You know what I mean? So they're like, oh, that dude is a, you know, a type A douchebag, rich, white privileged motherfucker. And it's like, my man, I, I grew up below the poverty level. It, in my family is a, a family of actors, stage actors from Chicago. And so I grew up in an integrated community where I was the only white boy on my football team. And so I had, a, I had an amazing journey where it was real. Where I got this, this is, this is, I, I, I would wish it upon anyone. Do you know what I mean? So you gravitated towards people regardless of anything other than, is he cool? Is he funny? Is he smart? Is he what? You know, this dude is, you know, my, my, my homecoming king was this one brother I played football with, all American wide receiver, and he used to bully the shit out of me and it made me tough. You know what I mean? And you need this shit. And everyone's living in their feelings and their feelings are being used right now you know, as, as, you know, as they're bartering and they're taking people down based on their feelings, right? You, you have to watch everyone's feelings. And it's, 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 it's kind of insane what the, what we're navigating right now. So oh, it's, yeah. so oh, yeah. with, with, with me, like, you know, uh, I'm Jewish. We didn't have very many Jewish kids in my school, you know, and so we, there was a group of like, you know, uh, white supremacists, you know, and they, you know, by the way, at the Klan meetings, they don't want my Jewish ass there. I'm not, I'm not invited to the Klan meetings, you know, for the record. <laughs> so this dude, you know how like when you're in school and like if you're a freshman, there's a dude that's a senior, you know, it only seems, it's only a few years, but this motherfucker, you know, they, they have beards and it's, you know, they're grown men and, and I'm 14 years old and this dude steps to me. And, you know, it was fucking crazy and he sucker punched me and I went down and, and I'm running towards him and I grew up dabbling in martial arts and whatnot and, and, and playing sports, but I'm a five foot nine, you know, biscuit over 170 pounds, which is you when you're in fighting shape. Um, and so I'm, you know, I, you know, to the outside eye, I'm just easy pickings, right? But, you know, you got to watch out for the little dudes because we're scrappy. So I got on top of him and I'm doing my thing and they pull me off him. And now I got two dudes pulling me off him and he just, you know, just, it was, it was a wrap. It was a wrap. And, you know, my father is also scrappy and he saw me, you know, and he said, what happened? And, you know, this dude called me a kike, which people don't even realize. It's so funny. We put these weights, weight into words, you know, the N word, all these, these words that trigger us. You know what I mean? He didn't like Jews. It's like, when I had my bar mitzvah, all the kids that came to my bar mitzvah, no one had been to a bar mitzvah. You know what I mean? And, and so I'm teaching them about my culture. And some dude hates me. He doesn't know me. You know, it's like these feelings are based on stupidity. They're based on lack of knowledge. You know what I mean? It just makes no fucking sense whatsoever. So I've always been, you know, and then I started doing Muay Thai. And, and I remember I was, I was working with a guy an old school dude named Benny Arquitas, Benny the Jet. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, old school. Yeah, and he, ha he had me in there and I'm, and I'm sparring with a guy that's out of my weight class and he's destroying me. And I, I break my toe because I kick him and instead of him blocking, he puts his elbow into my toe and it shatters. So I'm limping around. He's like, okay, let's, and he's taping my toe up. Let's get back in there. I'm like, brother, I'm an actor. I, it's a fucking wrap. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not going back in. You know what I mean? So like I have a reference for how tough you guys have to be. You know, I, I'm in the middle. One of the reasons I have, I have a, a lot of fake tattoos on me and I'm growing this shit out is I'm, I'm playing a guy right now that just got out of prison and you know, he's a bad motherfucker. And I'm, this is like a really, this, just even talking to you is a nice holiday for me because He's from Southie, he's got a Boston accent and it's dark and I have to go to a very dark place and I'm honored to do it. You know what I mean? 
So I'm playing a bad guy and I get to leave that and then live in the light. And I'm, I'm sure that you probably feel that way. I love that it, it just showed up. You just have a, a delightful drink. Is it, is it mezcal? Is it? No, no, some Thai tea. Thai tea. Lots of sugar. So you, you, you don't have a way in tomorrow. <laughs> I got I love it. So I get to burn it off. There you go. There you go. So I'm playing a bad dude. And do you ever, do you ever feel like you have to like hit that switch? And when does that happen when you know you have to become a savage? Um, man. Wow, this is a great question. Um, it's like uh, I'm alive right now. Everything, obviously, I'm alive. But I, I feel like at my most heightened at everything is like I'm there, man. Every second of every minute. It's once I get that fight announcement. Once they call me like, hey, the numbers worked out, so-and-so signed, now you're signing. Like since that moment, my I can – shift everything maybe right now i'm, I'm oriented in uh family time and traveling for business and just like working as soon as that call even is like a rumor it's like my whole freaking train of thought is just and it's uh physiological and like i've been doing it for so long it just happens man like immediately now if i was working out like two hours a day and just kind of coasting now i'm like six hours every day and i can just make that switch and i'm and i'm getting after you. so that that's when it first first like i got the call let's go I got something to look forward to, you know, and then from there, every little training session, no matter whether I did great or bad, just gets me a little bit closer to the right mindset that I need to be in. Because every, every day I'm in, uh, even before I went into the jungle, I'm a big visualizer. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to see it in my head first. This is what I'm going to do. And this is how I'm going to do it. And this is when I'm going to come out of it. So I do that in practice a lot. And I see everything in my head, but usually it's positive. It's, it's having a great two hour and a half practice or one hour practice, whatever, however long that length may be. I, I see it in my head before I do it. So then after I did everything I have to do, how close was I to that vision I had in my head? And once I can consist, hit that vision that I have in my head in practice, I know, man. Then the next step is just get in the cage and, and bring to the world everything I've been working on. You know, there are times when I look at you just before it starts and you're just kind of very calm and you may be leaning up against the cage and you're, you're very, very calm. And do you feel like if, if you're a little bit of a, cause yes, you want to, you want to rip their head off, but if you are a bit of a slave to your emotions, it's a wrap, right? You are smart enough to know already, like, man, fighting is all mental. You, know, you could fight the biggest guy at LA Fitness and you've been doing martial arts for a while. You can hit him one shot and take him out. Everybody like, how the hell did that happen? It's just, it's, it's technique, it's conditioning, all that. But mainly it's, it's mental. Going in there with the right mindset is, is a big part of fighting. That's, to me, that's everything, you know? Yeah, because you have to, you have to be totally present for it. But it's, it's interesting because like you, you fought, a, you know, you fought Nate Diaz. Yeah. And He's someone that, uh, like you, I think a lot of people look at and they go, that's just a scrappy, badass motherfucker that just, he's got, he's got skills and he doesn't put much into it. And they don't know that he's a triathlete and that he's dedicated, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu and he's dedicated his whole life to this shit to make it look like he's just a tough guy who got lucky, yeah. right? So when you're, when you're in there with him and you have respect for him, and you have nothing but love and everything for him, but you know you got to take this guy out. Everyone, every single one of them. So with all the dudes in the, in the business, there's not a guy that I that I hate or love because to me it's, it's all business. It's a chapter in my life, and the the more I could just keep my head level headed and my emotions cold, the better I'll do. You know, I I do show a lot of emotion in fights, like playing with guys. I'll make faces. I'll blow them a kiss. Any anything I can do to get under your skin, but right. on this. As relaxed as I can because those are the best performances. If 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 I truly like hate somebody and stuff, maybe it's not the best mixture for me to get in there because maybe I'm loading up too much and maybe just this little tell right here is enough to give this other world class athlete that read they need on me. So I, I uh I'm usually pretty level headed. Even if I can't stand the guy or something, at the end of the day, man, it's just show business, you know. It's just I'm not gonna there's nobody that I personally like, oh I hate this guy. There's a lot of guys that I'll slap him around if I see him on the streets, but yeah. not hatred. Well, speaking of that, you know, I, I think everyone was fascinated because you were being interviewed and then Leon Edwards 
comes by and he's talking shit. And we, I don't think anyone's ever seen something go down in real time like that. And it was just very interesting because you were just like, yeah, 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 excuse me. You know, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> and, you were just like, and it was just so interesting because, first of all, my question to you is, what, what was he saying to you? Because it obviously, it got you, it got you going. Um, well, leading up to this, he had it already in like online and stuff, had said numerous things. He called me a bitch, called me this and that. And all I had said is like, hey, we'll, we'll fight when we get a chance. Because at first he said he wanted to fight. And I said, I want to fight you too. But when the time comes around, if I have a higher ranked opponent that has a bigger name, it's going to pay me more money. It's actually ranked higher than you. Why am I going to fight you? I get it. You're daddy's little princess and, you know, everything should be your way, but not on my watch. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to do what's beneficial for me and my family. So I wanted to tell him this in person, leading up to the event he was fighting on, on my undercard, me and Darren Till were main event. So I'm seeing him around and I'm trying to dress him as a man, human being like, Hey, you had some nasty things to stay online. Look, I'm a human being just like you. Get it off your chest. What's up? I really was just trying to talk to him. He wouldn't have any of that. You know, there was numerous times and spots we could have talked that I tried approaching him. And he and he's just like an idiot, man. Just like the just like an idiot, you know? So nothing. So now after my fight, I won knockout of the night and I won fight of the night. And I'm doing my interview. And all you're trying to do is, is intimidate me and steal my shine. You know, he's there with like three or four guys. And I'm doing my interview and he's being loud and you can't see it because the cameras are pointing here as so they're walking by at first origin. But he's like flicking me off and all his friends are like me mugging me, flicking me off. I'm like, you know, you, you had plenty of time to talk to me. Now you're going to try to ruin my interview. And then uh, he interrupts, you know, and, and comes out. He, he tells me, um, you want to fight in July? And initially in my head, I'm just thinking maybe, maybe not because I, I can't stand you. I, so I might fight you right now. You're cutting off my interview. But I'm thinking in my head, you know, little does he know. And uh, and then um, he tells me to shut up. He's like, shut up. You're telling me to shut up in the middle of my interview. It's like somebody was to cut me and you off right now. It's going to be a problem. Yeah. You know? Busy. Give me a second, you know? Right. Um, when he says that, I tell him, say it to my face. And I start walking over there. And as I get close, he puts his hands up. I know what that means. You know, you're not going to get a free one on me. So I had to I had to hit him with a combo me and then get out of there. Right. Exactly. <laughs> now, what, what's interesting is that you, you've got all these guys like Leon who, I mean, at a certain point, you, your paths are going to have to cross, right? Well, for him right now, he doesn't, I guess after fighting Nate and seeing how much damage I did to Nate and how easy I did it, he realized there's, there's several levels between me and you and the boy because he doesn't want to fight him. They've asked him a couple times. He's not mentioning my name right now. And, and I get it, man. He knows that I'm, uh, when I get in there, I know to deliver the best experience to the fans and everybody watching and to further myself from the pack and to separate myself from the pack, I have to be as, as violent as possible. Thank goodness God's giving me the tools that when I get in there, I, I can get after it. And I'm going to hurt people. And I, I don't really come to like mess around, you know, as in Leon was was kind of messing around and so was Nate in there. He's like pointing at him, this and that. He knows, I, I, man, I'm going to try to take your head off every second of the fight, man. And my gas tank is better than his. And now he knows it for a fact. I crack and hard. You know, he never hurt Nate Diaz in that fight. I hurt Nate Diaz left and right. He knows, man, I can crack when I let him go, you know? Right. I mean, the reality is that Nate in those later rounds was in, in a position. And, I mean, you, you can make a case for that after Nate cracked him and he was on skates. You know, Nate was playing with him instead of maybe closing the show. He could have maybe closed that show. We don't know. So I Those milliseconds in in that particular instant where uh Leon was at it's like a lifetime i'm not even exaggerating because any one more shot might be the end of you and for a long time it's just that one shot at the right place you know me personally i would have i would have jumped all over him and, and right you know it would have been a wrap now what's interesting a guy, a guy like a guy like leon and and most fighters come up a traditional way and you didn't you know there's nothing traditional about your journey and do you think because, you know, you were, you know, you were fighting bare knuckles in backyards and, and that was part of it. And Leon got a little taste of it. You know what I mean? That, you know, not only are you an elite fighter and in that cage with all those rules, you're going to take him out, but then you have this whole other life and he got a little taste of the three piece. Do you think that's haunting? I'm sure it doesn't sit well with him. You know, who wants to be the guy that got <laughs> keeping the meal order? You know, nobody wants to be that guy. Right. I know it's as hell. But um what bothers me is that he's still saying things like that he's that I attacked him. Like, no, you you clearly 
jumped in my interview, said all types of things, and then want to try to talk to you face to face. You can see it in the video. I'm, I'm coming with him with my hands like this, and he goes, right. does that. Well, but that's what I'm saying. That That's a guy that doesn't have the reference for, mm. for you know, a, for combat outside of the ring like you have. Like, he doesn't have a reference for that. You know, you know if you put your hands up like that, you, 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 know, you don't pull a knife unless you're going to use it. That's it. Amen. 100%. Was there one thing that gave you perspective? You know, because a lot of times we, we kid ourselves. I know that I have. I'm still single and I'm 200 years old and it's not cute anymore. And I've been kidding myself for years. Like, oh man, I'm still young. It's like, no, motherfucker, you're not young. And you're still single, right? And I think with a fighter, you have a finite amount of time, you know? Yeah. And, and I think, was there a moment in the jungle where you went, look, man, where you got perspective? I think, I, maybe I'm, uh, I'm just projecting, but did you see, were you looking over the trees or something and you saw kind of a different perspective of your career and your life and you went, man, I, I got to do this a different way. And, what, and it's, did something click where you knew, okay, if I don't focus and if I don't have this clarity, um, it's, you know, it's not going to go the way I want it to go. Man, um, let's see what I could explain. While I was in there, I, uh, I thought about the moments that I did good in, in training and in fights. And I thought about myself at that particular moment. I think I was 33 years old. And uh, I was working out with the Olympians. I, I remember one day we went for like a good, nice run, like a good 30 minute run in the sand with some guys that, that, that were good runners. I, I'm, I'm, for runners, I'm not a good runner. For an MMA guy or a combat sport guy, I'm a decent runner. But for runner runners, I'm, I'm not a good runner and I never have been. But on that particular day, I remember wanting to like really get after and not beat the guy, but just, hey, let, let me stay in the same neighborhood as these guys, you know, as we did the run. And I finished up the run and then I, I took a shower on the beach and then I went and got lost in the jungle real quick before we had the games because we had like a three hour do whatever you want. And when I was over there, I was like, man, th this is one of the better runs that I've done. So I know physically I, I, I still give a lot of my body, but I'll break it down. I was just thinking like, man, is it worth the amount of sacrifice that it's going to take to be there? Like, it, if I want to be where I'm at right now, is everything that I'm going to leave behind worth it? You know, because a lot of people say, like, man, it's my dream to open up a restaurant. But maybe you're going to have to sleep out of your car for a fucking year to be able to save up the money to put up that restaurant. Is it still your dream? So I, I, I sat there day and night and I, and I like I said, a part of me was slightly hurt because I'm like, this will no longer be a part of my life. And I'm going to remove it. If I want to get to here, I have to remove this here because I, I just feel like it's dead weight. So that I, I made that commitment and I stuck to it. You know, I just and before I even got out of there, as I was in the jungle already, my habits and, and my training thought were getting better. And, and another thing was um my my train of thought going into fights is I would dissect guys and do my homework on them. My mind wasn't right. My 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 energy wasn't spent being spent in the right places all the time like I should have been like I just 100% need to focus on this fighting and I also need to switch my mind there's a lot of close decisions that I had that I, I thought at one point I'm like man if I had beat so and so and so and so I would have been fighting for a title and this and that and then I started thinking like man I'm, I'm such a fucking peasant you know I'm thinking of beating these guys by like just beating them instead of ending them so there's nobody involved in the decision but me and you you know so you had I mean, to, you, had to, just, you had the clarity to dream bigger yeah, to dream bigger. I had to dare to dream bigger, and I also had to to really bite down. And is this possible? Can I eliminate all the people that get put in front of me? You know, and um, like the street fighting that you mentioned, I've I've always been a gambler, so I was like, fuck, because to knock somebody out, you got to put yourself in harm's way as well. You know, it could happen. A guy could just run into a bunch, but usually, if you're seeking the knockouts, you you might be liable to get hit one because you're putting yourself constantly in that line of fire. You know, so gambling man i made that decision i was like you know what it's gonna work this, this is what i'm gonna do man. It's gonna work. everything i got yeah i mean it, it, i mean it's kind of fascinating that even at the level that you were at that what you were able to achieve you still in a way weren't all in which is crazy i love it man you're it, <laughs> it's like you're at a drive-thru i love it man 
That see this this is this ties into the question when I ask you because now you know for, from the outsider looking in you've achieved so much and you're now living the dream you know uh, you know you're you're now enjo- enjoying literally the fruits of your labor labors and so <laughs> so I guess the question is you know it's funny I was watching Connor fight and a friend of mine said. I, I don't think Connor's going to take this one. And I said, why? He goes, his, you know, his belly's full, but, he, but he's not still hungry. You know, to steal from the great Bob Marley. You know, me belly full, but me hungry. He wasn't, it is, you know, because he, be careful what you wish for. You know, he, he got everything he wanted. Do you feel like, and forgive me for asking this, you've achieved, you know, Maybe, you know, to your 33-year-old self, what you have now, you'd be like, that exceeded all your dreams. Are you still, can you still dig deep and have the hunger to perform on your highest level, even though your, your belly's full? That, that's a freaking phenomenal question. That's an amazing question. And um, I, obviously, I always tell myself, yeah, I'm hungry. I, I really want this because I have a lot of goals that, I, that I, I won't close this chapter of my life until I accomplish certain things and then I'll move on. But how I really do it because it's one thing that, to think it and feel it, but it's another thing to do it. When I go to the gym, there's I'm at American Top Team, so we have on any day 80 professionals there. A good amount of them being in the UFC, whether Dustin Poirier or another top five guy in there. We have guys galore to train. And, and how I really put everything into perspective is... Can I go with this 22, 23 year old, put in a good two, three rounds and then go with another guy in his prime, put in another two, three rounds? Because that in itself is a tremendous amount of gas that I'm wasting. It's, it's, it's going with these guys that are really good. They can push me. And that's how I know that I'm hungry because a lot of guys, when they get to my stage in their career, they they start getting the easier goals in the gym. They start looking for the guys that they can beat up. I'm, I'm still wanting to make it as competitive as possible. And if I beat this guy's ass with two hours it's not some some nobody from the gym it's one of the better guys in the gym that's making me put forth all my effort so that's where a lot of it comes like do i still have it can i go to the gym can i still see the punches can i take guys down and, and still have a gas tank to throw some bombs afterwards that's where i get my uh my courage from my fire like yeah man i still got the hunger for this because i know these guys are hungry you know the little the 22 year old that, that's making like fourteen thousand dollars a year that's living at, at the gym it doesn't have a car. It doesn't have a single sponsorship. I know that guy's hungry. So if I could go with that guy and go with that guy on the constant and hard and, and do well, I'm in the right place. Don't go anywhere. How You Live in J-Pivot will be right back after we pay some bills. You've got back-to-back meetings, errands to run, chores to take care of. What's the secret to clearing your to-do list? A little help from DoorDash. You get dinner household essentials, and everything on your grocery list delivered. You know, what's interesting is, and I'm not making this up right now, I switched over to DoorDash. And I I won't name, you know, the other company's Postmates. Um, And the the cool thing about DoorDash is like, I don't know what is happening, but they move at the speed of light. So I'm in, I'm totally in, so this is easy. For a limited time only, you guys, Our listeners get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code P-I-V-E-N. That's 25% off. That's a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter code P-I-V-E-N Piven. Don't forget, that's code Piven. P-I-V-E-N for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Yeah, man, we, we keep getting these challenges. I mean, you were, you were 33 and you weren't achieving what you thought you deserved and you were hungry. And then you, you didn't want to do this reality show. You were like, fuck that. And they kept coming back with more money. It was like the universe was saying, no, no, no. We got to drag you to the jungle because we got to give you some perspective. Your dreams aren't big enough. And that's right? why I think, man, th- that that paradigm shift, that that different type of mindset could have happened to me in jail, 
could have happened to me in a hospital bed. It could have happened anywhere where I would have been alone enough with myself to understand myself better and, and to see what I, I really had to fix. And to anybody, listen, being with yourself, it takes a little bit of time. It might be uncomfortable. At first, you might quick phone call to somebody. Hey, how was your day or something? It takes a little bit of time to get used to yourself, your own thoughts, your own perspective, and the best ideas for you. You know, that, that sort of thought. Not that the people around me have bad intentions or ideas, but maybe they just weren't fully aligning with mine and what I needed to do to succeed. Exactly. And then once you are aligned, you're going to be bringing different types of people into your life anyway. And, you know, there are some people that they don't have our best interest. We don't know. You know, we have no idea. And, and you know, it's, it can be lonely to cut these people out, but it, it can be the best thing. And, you know, from an outsider looking in at your life, you've got now new challenges because you've got so many things going on. You know, and you've got um, temptation and distractions coming at you from every angle, right? So now you've got reason why we're both single, man. These distractions and <laughs> yeah, but I, but but I'm at I'm at a different place because you you've got kids, you've done your thing. I'm looking for what you've what you have. So I'm in a diff, I'm in a kind of in a different place. But you, you know. You can welcome all those distractions and then figure out what's right for you. I got I to gotta focus up, man. For the love of God, I'm, I'm in the jungle trying to figure this shit out. You know what I mean? I can't. For the love of God, it's not cute anymore, man. Jesus. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't even know if it still works. I know good the, the Latin community in Miami, I, I got you hooked up here, man. Well, you know, it, it's, it's funny because when I, when I travel, they think that I'm Puerto Rican, which I always find a very big compliment. You can see it now. I'm, I'm the Puerto Rican Jeremy Piven. I love it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But man, I would I would be honored if we could if we could train someday. That would be that would be. I would love to be humiliated. Let's go, man. No, no. <laughs> just exchanging information, my brother. I just whatever you're good at, I'll make it a little bit better and this and that, man. Because that that's what uh there, there's you know different forms of training, but um. I don't believe like beating a guy up is always the best way to teach him. I believe in like showing you, Hey, that's wrong. That's right. Without like having to freaking hurt the person. You know, a lot of times I get good results out of my amateurs like that. My pro guys that I work with a lot. So it, it'll be fun, man. I'll show you some things you could, you could pull off on people. That, that would be outstanding. I, I've got some, uh, I, I got to fire a few things at you before I forget. And if you don't want to answer these, it's, it's totally cool. But there've been some YouTubers that have shined the light on the fact that the UFC guys are not being paid what they should be, you know, That's what's, your, what's your take on, what's your take on that? Holy that shit. A, it just keeps coming. This is right? amazing, bro. Oh my God. You are living the dream. That is like a 12 piece of sushi. I don't know if that's, we got some, what in God's name for the kids at home. I, I hope you can get YouTube and look at this. My God, there's some there's some tuna in there. There's some crab. We, we've got some rice paper. We, we, uh, a little, uh, some sashimi on the side. Fuck, man, this is unbelievable. We should have our own cooking show, bro. We should be on the road. This is insane. Everyone at home, you need to be. You need to get these visuals. Don't tell me cooking show. If you dedicate your entire life to something, you too can eat like this, kids. Uh, you're speaking right to my heart, food. Oh, hell no. How great but, would that be just to, to travel all over the world and eat the best food in the world and just report on it? Get paid on it? Whatever yeah. the way it might be. Just that I'm even getting paid to eat. Come on, brother. That's it. That's it right there. I'm going to get on that. Um, are you, when you look at like the Paul brothers and guys like that, that are going for theirs, be honest now, what, what, what's the first thought that comes to your mind when you see them doing their thing? And I've no, I've. The first ahead. time, first thought that ever came to my mind as they were crossing over was coaching. Like I just thought money, right? Because they're bringing eyeballs into the sport, whether they pick me or they pick the next guy, they're bringing a lot more awareness, a lot more eyeballs. They probably might never have looked at fighting at all. I, I don't, I don't know uh, Jake Paul's exact demographic, but I don't know if a lot of these guys were were in the fight world before. And a lot of these other rappers and, and YouTubers that are coming in, they're they're bringing in people that have never seen the sport and educating them. And a lot of these guys are young, 
So they're going to be hooked for life. You know you know how it is with fighting. Once it, like, bites you, that's it. This is, like, the only thing you want to do and watch and see, you know? So I, I like it in that sense. Um, obviously, there, there's there's the politics of it. There's certain guys that, that are getting so much money. But if we're talking about fighting, they don't deserve that money. But we're not talking about fighting. We're talking about entertainment via fighting. So, of course, these guys deserve these paychecks. Now, I think it's amazing for my community. I know a lot of fighters in the beginning or still feel kind of disrespected. These guys are getting so much hype. But it's only a matter of time before one of them comes on over and, and, and chooses to fight with somebody that, that's a real problem, you know? So, man, to tell you the truth, I freaking love it, man. I love it that that these guys are coming in and just bringing more exposure to God forbid one of them picks me or something to fight. I'm in, man. I, I wouldn't mind going 10x on my money, you know, to fight somebody that hasn't their whole life dedicated themselves to this, you know. So I feel like I have tremendous advantages against any of these guys, you know. It's like me going to play football. I might be a decent athlete. It doesn't mean it's going to transfer over to football, especially now in my career. You know? No, but but that's the thing about you, that that when you've dedicated your life to something the way you have, you understand your limitations. So you intrinsically know, oh, okay, you're a great athlete. But if you were to step on into someone else's arena, no matter how elite you are, you're going to get crushed. Crushed. Yeah. So what's interesting is the Paul the Paul brothers do have a little background in wrestling. So at a certain point, it would be nice to see them grapple, you know, do some jujitsu, and then step into a ring with a guy like you. I just we're all waiting for that moment. I mean, Jake is going to fight uh, Woodley now. Man, Woodley's a hell of an athlete, and he's training, man. He's he's in shape. I, I like Jake. I've met him a couple times. But Woodley's like my brother. We've been training for like 13, 14 years together, beating the crap out of each other, exchanging information. He's helped me out in, in a lot of situations and just training and stuff. So I know this guy in and out in the gym. And, man, I, I give a lot of props to Jake, man. You know, his team, he, he's got a very good team behind him. They picked Woodley. They're, they're they're going outside of the comfort zone, for sure. I'm sure they're positive. They think they're going to win. But me personally, if I was like Jake's manager, I want to pick that fight. You know, I would have said, hey, let's, let's work our way there or stay away from this guy as long as we can because that's the guy that's coming to fight and they can crack, you know? Do, do you think they took a look at Woodley and went, okay, yeah, he's a problem. But, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, he's approaching 40 and he's lost three in a row. And there's something not quite right about him. Are they? You think they're thinking that way? They have to be. That, that, that's the only thing that would lead me to believe that they pick Woodley. You know, they must think like he's a shell of himself now. In this shell, we can beat. That's the only thing that I'm thinking. Because obviously, they know a prime Woodley or something in his prime, they, they could never take on him. It's not that this, the other side, but it's not what they did their whole life. You know, Woodley wrestles since he's seven, eight years old. Right. Was in some point in combat. His whole life, this this is all this man does is, is combat sports. So and he me, also has extreme power. Extreme oh, yeah. power. You know, that's Close. yeah, that's that's gonna be crazy. I also like him because he's fearless. He's you know, because I've been doing stand-up for a few years now. I transitioned and um, you know, I'll go to these dive bars, you know, where what you have to as a stand-up, you gotta go and you gotta try material out anywhere. So I go to this little dive bar. In the middle of nowhere, and there's there's Tyron doing his thing up there, and he's getting his reps in. And people don't know this, but like he's going to have an interesting second act. You know what I mean? He's very funny. He's talented in so many different ways. So he's going to make his bag, and hopefully he'll have a great showing and make a bunch of money and continue on. But that guy, he's a really interesting, eccentric dude. You know, who has a good work ethic. And and I think uh, for for what I mean, either one of them, it's going to be like a snowball effect. I think uh, after this fight, many other boxers now, professional boxers, are going to call out Woodley because they're going to see him as a paycheck, and they're going to see him as like this guy's not a boxer. I'm a full time boxer now. He's a big name in boxing, and it's just going to be a big snowball effect for Woodley as well. So I I think this is a great career move for him. Yeah, that's it's going to be it's going to be fascinating. But I love I love the fact that you get. You know, because there's a lot of a lot of fighters that just go, you know, they immediately get reactive. Like I put in all this time and and now, you know, Ben Askren goes and makes more money for, for you know, taking a dive in eight seconds or whatever they're saying, you know. Um, but you get the totality of this whole game, you know, you, I'm also nothing. Older sport, so I, I, I know what what could come of it. A lot of the, the fighters that maybe get upset are like the younger guys like that been training my whole life and I've never gotten a dollar. 
these guys are getting $5 million first fight, you know? All right, I get it, you know? But also, you know, okay, well, if that's the case, then you got you to gotta develop a presence, you know, out there so that you can make these types of moves. Okay, if the game is rigged, how are you going to proceed? Don't rail against the universe. You know what I mean? If you can't beat them, join them. Get in the game. Figure it out. Figure it out. You know? <laughs> exactly. Figure it out. Like you did in the jungle. I feel guilty, man, because you got a plate of sushi. You're in your car eating. Hey, one, <laughs> I mean, one of the best interviews I've done, my brother. We got to do some more of it. I, listen, I, I would love it. My, my wheels are spinning. I think we need to... I think we need to, to, to go all over the world and, and just start fighting people and eating their cuisine. I mean. <laughs> we eat the cuisine and it's not good. Like, we, we, let's say we travel to Egypt to go to the best chef and the cuisine's not good. It's like, okay, we've got to fight. Let's say you made us come on. we got to fight. It's but, good, fight. But the good news for them is at that particular time, you don't feel like fighting. So it's me against a couple sous chefs and it that's when and we're you know at an el torito in the middle of nowhere and it's going to get ugly my brother i'm telling you we got to figure this out <laughs> i gotta i i gotta you know i gotta mix it up i you know it's funny as as i get older i gotta train much smarter like what what i've been doing and it's helped me so much this is going to sound like some old lady shit but i've been doing a ton of pilates to save my body because I basically snapped off my super splenatus boxing because I was just not doing the right thing with my shoulders. So it just, it just popped off. You know what I mean? It's gone. And they're like, look, you need shoulder surgery, but you're too young for shoulder surgery. So you're fucked. I was like, no, I'm not fucked. So I've been doing Pilates and I'm telling you, man, it's the fountain of youth. Yeah. Shit, I might have to try this out. Yeah. I, I, I go and, and it, it's just so funny. You've, you have pro athletes in there and they're just being humbled. Because it's, it's a form, there's, I, I, I'm going to bore the hell out of you. This guy, Joseph Pilates, was in the hospital. He was in a bed and he just took all the pulleys and he was a dancer. And he was like, how do I figure out how to work out while I'm in this hospital bed? And so he worked out this full system. And it's this system where you can't cheat. A lot of times when you're lifting, doing all this shit, you can figure out ways to cheat with your body weight. You can't cheat with this shit. And it just, it, it, it gets to the, the root and the core of the muscle. This is the part where people start tuning out my podcast and they're like, the fuck are you pussy ass motherfuckers talking about? I didn't pay $11 to listen to goddamn Pilates. You fucking hack. <laughs> Man, listen, I'm coming to Miami. I, I, I've, maybe, maybe it's just rolling around in, that, in, that, in, your, in your ride, eating and tasting food. I mean, let's. Let's go, man. When you coming? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this movie on the 11th. Uh, I'm working with the great Terrence Howard. You know who Terrence is? Hustle and Flow, I think. Uh, thank you. I couldn't think of Hustle and Flow, my favorite movie ever. He crushed it in that. Um, and this is a movie about uh, dismantling segregation and in Boston in the 70s, and you know, in in a time where we're all divided, you know, and there's a lot of a lot of racism out there. We're we're exploring it, and um, you know, I'm playing a I'm playing a very bad, bad, bad person. And, you know, I, I went to him and I said, Terrence, I just want to let you know, I'm going to be throwing that N word around, you know, and, and I, before I can get anything out, he said, I want you to lean into it. Cause the reality is we need to show people who these people were and, you know, it's it, like we were talking about, you can't halfway do anything. You have to fully commit, you know, and we need to show and, you know, you can talk about these things about racism and all you want, but we, you know, I'm an actor, so I want to show through my creativity. Uh, that's how I want to contribute. I want to tell a story and then you come to your own conclusions and you have these discussions and let it sit with you, you know, but I, I want to show a fully realized character and I want you to watch this story and, and you figure out where you stand with this. You know what I mean? And, and start having discussions about it instead of canceling people, you know? That canceling stuff ain't, you know, ain't something I like too much. No. Listen, man, I, I could talk to you all fucking day and I'm feeling guilty because I need you to eat and, and get back to your kids. Yes, sir. Hey, when you're my, you got, you got to let me know, my brother. I, I'm As soon as I wrap, listen. As we were saying, don't pull a knife unless you're going to use it. I'll be there. No more. You tell me, give me a couple of days' notice. We're out there, man. 
All right, well, brother. I got two things on the list. Older Jewish ladies, uh -huh. older Latin. Hey, no. 526. Is that younger or older? For me? Yeah. Brother, I, I need someone... I need someone older, uh, you know, because they're not going to get my references. You know, I was born a long time ago. What are we, are we talking about? 30? I, I, someone in their 30s, self-empowered, that can get the joke um, oh. and will take care of me. You know, be able to just, you know, walk me around in my wheelchair. Someone that has patience. Okay. So <laughs> maybe some nursing in the past as well. Yeah, nursing would be first responder is good. You know, maybe mid 30s, something like that, brother. I need you to put all your attention on that. Mid thirties first responder is cooking uh, like a thing or, or not for you? Because for me, I, I won't date a cook your ass off. If you can't cook your ass off, forget it. I just I, bad, right? I date nobody. So they got to be able to cook for me. Cooking is is the most underrated skill ever. They, they you know, if she can step up, that's um, it's unbelievable. Once a week, they got to be able to make that meal that makes you say, "Oh shit, this is why I'm in a relationship." Okay, I remember now. That's right. That's right, my brother. Count me in, man. Uh, I, I will be on the lookout for you. I'll see you soon. Continue to be an inspiration. Continue. Belly full, still be hungry. Yes, sir. And I'll be checking out your movie, my brother. God bless, man. Huge fan always, bro. Thank you, brother. I'll see you soon. How You Live in Jay Piven is a cast original podcast in association with Common Enemy and Tenderfoot TV. Producer is Kyle Tequila. Theme song by Common. Executive producer for cast is Colin Thompson. Executive producers for Tenderfoot TV are Donald Albright and Payne Lindsay. Executive producers for Common Enemy are Jared Einson and Dave Osco. Catch all new episodes of How You Live in J. Piven every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts.